Hi everyone, this is Amy Johnson Crow, and welcome to this week's Archives.com live stream. Today we are going to be talking about using the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America records on Archives.com. And I am so excited to be presenting this, uh, this live stream this week. It's a great set of collections, a great set of records, and I think that you're going to find a lot of really, really good genealogical information in these. So let's go ahead and get started. So a little bit about the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America collections, or as you'll sometimes see it referred to, the ELCA collections. These collections were put together in partnership with the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America archives. And as part of this project, we digitized and indexed about 1,000 rolls of microfilm. So if you can just sort of imagine, you know, how much information, how many records might be contained in 1,000 rolls of microfilm. And as it turns out, there are nearly 4.6 million records in this set of collections. The time span that these records cover include from about the mid 1800s through 1940. And it's actually split into three different collections. The first being births, baptisms, and confirmations, a collection for marriages, and a collection for deaths and burials. So what is the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America? I think it's important any time that you're working with a new set of records that you haven't used before to take a minute or two and learn about where those records came from because it can make an impact on how you use them and what you can expect to find. And that's certainly the case with the ELCA records. It's important to know that the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America is a body of Lutheran churches. And it does not include all Lutheran churches in the United States. So it's, it's sort of a subset. If, if you consider all of the Lutheran churches in the United States, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America is one particular group of them. Now the ELCA was founded in 1987 as a merger of the American Lutheran Church, the Association of Evangelical Lutheran Churches, and the Lutheran Church in America. So you almost have a, a genealogy of churches that are now affiliated with the ELCA. And the roots go much, much deeper than 1987, as you probably guessed, since the records start in about the mid-1800s. So if you take a look at the roots of the ELCA, two of the groups that merged to form the ELCA were the American Lutheran Church and the Lutheran Church in America. And you can see some of the groups that earlier had merged to form those groups. So we have a German group of American Lutheran Church, the United Evangelical Lutheran Church, which was a group of Danish churches. We have a couple groups of Norwegian churches, the Evangelical Lutheran Church and the Lutheran Free Church. And we also have another group of German, Slovak, and even Icelandic ethnic uh, Lutheran churches here in America. Some Swedish churches, and a Finnish church and a group of Danish churches. So we can see that these are very ethnically based Lutheran churches. We have a lot of Germans, Danish, Norwegians, um, Swedish and Finnish records or um, migrants that are going to appear in the ELCA records. So it's important to, to think about those roots of the ELCA so that you have an idea of who you might and who you might not find in these records. Now, a word about language. Many of these records are written 
in that original language. They could be in German, they could be in Norwegian, uh, they could be, you know, in, in any of the languages that that particular congregation was, was tied to. And that could make a difference on how the names might appear. Even though you might typically see your ancestor named in the census or named in, in other records as Anne or Anna, she might appear in these records as Annika or Anya. So the name might appear in what you might think of as the ethnic form. And you're going to want to become familiar with some key words in whatever language that church was affiliated with. So if you are looking at German church records, you will want to know geboren and gestorben, born and died. And admittedly, my Norwegian is rather rusty. So forgive me because I'm probably mispronouncing this, but fot and doda as born and died. So if you're working with a Norwegian church, those are going to be some words that you're going to see regularly throughout the records. So why are these records so great? Well, many of these records name the parents and often include the mother's maiden name. And isn't that sort of the ultimate genealogical question? You know, we found the parents, but what is the mother's maiden name? We often find multiple family members together in the same church, in that same congregation. And what's really exciting is that some of these records will predate the civil vital records in that area. As an example, here is a baptism record from one of the uh, ELCA-affiliated churches in Seymour, Indiana. And we have Wilhelmine Louisa Schrader, the father Gottlieb Heinrich Schrader, the mother Anna Maria Louisa, G-E-B, short for geboren. So she's born, and it looks like Munta. We have Johann Hermann Vornholt, father is Johann Heinrich Vornholt, and the mother is Anna Maria Eliza Geborn Nolte. So we have the child's name, the father's name, the mother's name with her maiden name, but what's exciting is when you realize that these are births from 1864. Civil birth records in Indiana didn't begin until 1882. So this is predating civil birth records in Indiana by 18 years. And what's really cool is that it's giving an exact place of birth, that this first child was born in Bartholomew County, Indiana, and the second one was born in Jackson County, Indiana. So even though this church is in Jackson County, there are children being baptized who were actually born in Bartholomew County. So that's really exciting to see. So what do the records look like? Most of them are in sort of a register format. You will see some records that are more of a paragraph style, but a lot of them are sort of a register or a ledger style but it does vary from church to church how exactly they're laid out. The top one, the top record is a baptism record from a church in Iowa. The second one is a baptism record from a church in Washington state. And we see that we do have a little bit more information on the Washington state record. We have the name of the pastor. So, it's going to vary from church to church exactly what records or exactly how those records are laid out. So when you go into archives.com and you want to search these records, again, there are three different collections. So you will have under the birth records is where you will find the ELCA birth, baptism, and confirmation records. Under the marriage records is where you will find, obviously, the ELCA marriage records. And then under the death record collections is where you will find the ELCA death and burial records. So to get into the records, 
from the archives.com homepage after you've logged in, make sure that you click on the search tab because that will give you more search options than if you do a search from the home page. Some of you may have a version of the home page where you can search right from there. But click on that search tab and you'll get a page like this. And you could just go ahead and put in a name, put in dates right from here. But if you want to look specifically, let's say in the ELCA birth records, what I would want to do is go over here where it says select an archive and I will want to select birth records and after that then I can select specifically oops I lost my cursor then I can select specifically the ELCA birth baptism and confirmation records So I was interested in researching a birth record for Clara Reif. So I just went ahead and selected, I, I went into the ELCA birth baptism and confirmation records, and I just typed in her name. I didn't put in any other, um, I didn't put in a place or a year. I figured that Clara Reif was a fairly unusual name. And I was surprised that I actually came up with three birth records for Clara Reif. And what I noticed immediately was that two of them had the exact same birth date and the exact same middle initials. Here we have Clara A.W. Reif with a birth date of March the 14th, 1905, and a location of Adams County, Washington. Now the next result was for Clara Alma Wanda Reif, so it's the same middle initials, same birth date, March 14, 1905, but the location is in Iowa. So I'm thinking, what are the chances of a girl with two middle names having the exact same birth date, but being several states apart, one in Washington, one in Iowa? And you might be wondering the same thing. But the thing to remember is that the birth records can include confirmations. And indeed, that's what has happened here with Clara Reif, born March 14, 1905. The first record, actually the, it was number two on the results, the record out of Iowa, I see that the event type is baptism. So this is a record that is created very near the time of her birth. The record out of Iowa, oh, I'm sorry, the, the, that, was, that was the record out of Iowa. The record out of Washington State, however, is a confirmation record. And we can see also from this page, it's giving her birth date and a birth place of St. Paul, Minnesota. Now that doesn't exactly match up with what we saw before with the church out of Iowa, but remember what we saw from that Indiana church record. Remember how there were children from different counties being baptized in the church in, in a different county. So that could be the same thing here where she, she could have been born in St. Paul, Minnesota but was baptized in a church in Iowa, and now we're see, we see her being confirmed in a church in Washington State. And going through the 1920 census, we do find Clara with those parents that we had before, Carl and Alma. So we do have the same girl in two different churches in two different states, one as her baptism record, the other her confirmation record. So that's really exciting. Along here. All right, but let's say that we want to find other rifes now in, in Washington. We want to find, you know, her brothers and sisters who might be confirmed in that same church. We currently don't have the ability to narrow it down specifically to a church, 
But what you can do is remove the first name, just look for the last name, and then add the location as a filter. So you could add just the state, you could add the state plus a city, you could have the state plus perhaps a range of years for the births or, or whatever event you're looking for. So that is a way that you can find other people with that same name in that same area. So we've looked a lot at birth and baptism and confirmation records. What about marriage records? Here is a marriage record from 1904. And what I love about this is that it's naming the groom, it names the bride, but it's also giving their exact birth date. So when you're researching someone like Peter Rasmussen, who there's probably more than one Peter Rasmussen in these records, you can see, at least in the case of this particular church, what his birth date is. So you can kind of compare to see if that matches what you know about your Peter Rasmussen. And what I like about these marriage records, and again, it's going to vary from, from church to church, from congregation to congregation, but this particular one is also listing their place of birth. So we have here the marriage of Peter Rasmussen and Carolyn Hilson, who was born the 10th of August, 1881, in it looks like Langeland, Denmark. So what a great clue that is that, you know, we might have known from the census that she was born in Denmark. Well, now we have a place in Denmark. We can start looking for her origins. Plus, as we scroll across, we also have their names. So Peter Rasmussen's parents being Christian Rasmussen and perhaps Heine Horsens and Carolyn Hilson's parents being Christian Hilson and Pauline Wartenson. The other people listed in the next column were the witnesses to the marriage. So they might be related, they could be cousins, they could just be friends, but it gives us some other names that we'll want to keep in mind as we're doing our research. Death records. The death records can be so very robust in the ELCA death records. Here we have Maria Dow, Geboren, remember G-E-B being the abbreviation for Geboren or born. So we have Maria Dow, Geboren Price. So here we have her maiden name. Maria Dow, born Price, born April 6th, 1847 in, and I, apologize, I don't know what that is an abbreviation for, but Holstein died March the 15th, 1921 at her home in Welton, Iowa, and was buried on the 17th of March, 1921, in the cemetery at Grand Mound, age 73 years, 10 months, 9 days. So we have her maiden name in this record. We know where she was born. We know where she died. We know when and where she was buried. So what a great record that is. I've seen other death records in this collection that will list the parents' names, sometimes including the mother's maiden name. Even with, sometimes you will find even when it's the husband who has died, sometimes it will name the wife with her maiden name. So it almost turns into a little mini biography in, in some of these records. So it's pretty exciting. But I do have to tell you that there are some congregations that kept very true to their ethnic roots. And you will see records like this one where it's written all pretty much, it looks like it's in either German or Danish. Um, so this is one of those one of those cases where you're going to need to to be patient and go word by word and see what words you can pick out. Obviously, the dates are easy to pick out. You know, um, as we have here, 17 October, we can pick that out pretty easily. But for other words, we're going to want to pull out 
what they are and see if we can translate them. And if it's in a language that you're not familiar with, a resource that can be very handy, surprisingly, is Google Translate, which you can find at translate.google.com. And it includes languages like Norwegian. So if you see Doda in a Norwegian record, just go to Google Translate and you can put in Doda and have it translated into English and you can see that it means died. And my apologies to anyone out there who actually speaks Norwegian. I'm sorry that I probably horribly butchered the pronunciation of that word. All right, so that in a very few minutes was an overview of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America records on archives.com. So excited about this collection. Um, been seeing a lot of people finding a lot of really good stuff about their ancestors, and that's what it's all about. Next week, next Wednesday, here on the archives.com live stream, we are going to be finding your Mr. Right, working with common names. My maiden name is Johnson, so I'm pretty familiar with working with common names and the the pitfalls that you can fall into when you are working with them. So how do you know which Mr. Johnson or Miss or, or which Mr. Wright is yours? So that's what we're going to tackle next Wednesday, April 10th at the same time, one o'clock Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. I encourage everyone to stay connected with archives.com. You can do so in a variety of ways including on our blog, where we just posted all of the upcoming topics for the April live streams. Also on Facebook, follow us on Facebook, find lots of updates there. If you are a member of the Twitter sphere, we are too. You can find us at archives.com on Twitter. And if you can't make it here to the uh, live stream on Wednesday as we're doing them live, you can check out our archived um, live streams that we have done, we've uploaded them to our YouTube channel. And there was a little issue with, um, with how the live stream from last week on marriage records, there was a little technical difficulty with how that one saved. So we're going to work on re-recording that one and getting that uploaded here hopefully uh, very soon. So we will let you know when that goes up. But all of the other ones and uh, some other great videos as well on our YouTube channel. For those of you who are watching this live, as soon as I wrap this up, I will be popping over to the chat room to answer a few questions. And for those of you who are watching this later on YouTube, uh, please stop by and see us on Wednesdays. We have a really good time in the chat room, have a lot of really good discussions. So until next week, this is Amy Johnson Crow wishing you happy researching.